Hi, my name is Mary Spender and you are watching Tuesday Talks. And in this week's video, I'm going to run through everything you need to be a solo gigging musician. Tuesday, 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 Tuesday Talks. Have you seen the meme that defines a musician as someone who puts $5,000 worth of gear into a $500 car to drive 100 miles for a $50 gig. Well, it's annoyingly accurate. In this video, I'm gonna show you exactly what I used to be a solo, self-sufficient gigging musician. Now, this meant that I would go to a bar or a pub or even a wedding, and all I would need was a power supply to set up my gear, play for a number of hours, and then pack it all down and drive home. I'm gonna set up all my gear in my studio that probably isn't big enough to fit everything, so I will try and get it all on camera, but I'm gonna talk you through every single purchase and everything you need, basically like a shopping list, if you wanna start gigging yourself. Just to make sure I had everything, I laid everything out on the floor in a rather bizarre Instagram-y sort of layout thing. <laughs> but now it's time to set it up. While everything is laid out on the floor, I will show you, this is my guitar that has gone through so much with me. It has been on the road since about 2009 when I bought it, and it's done pretty much every pub gig uh, I could possibly want, maybe bar a few times when I play electric guitar, but that was very rare because obviously with this, you can get some nice percussive sounds too. This is my trusty RC20XL loop station by Boss. I bought this in 2010 and it has never failed me other than user error, which uh, did happen quite a lot. Here we have the mixer that is actually part of these two speakers, the Yamaha Stage Pass 300, I think. It's pretty old. I'm not sure they even do it anymore and I bought it secondhand. Then the more glamorous things, you know, like cables, uh, kettle leads, and then guitar cables, XLR for the microphone, power supply for the loop pedal, plus a songbook, which uh, I always need because I'm terrible at remembering lyrics. When you're playing four hours of songs, all in different keys by different artists, a capo is definitely a necessity. Power, power and more power. You can never have enough. A mic stand, a guitar stand, par cans, microphone, then obviously speaker stands for these nicely portable things. Then if like me, you want to hear yourself, I use the Roland Cube as a little monitor. Everything is set up as it would be in a live gig setting. It's rather cramped in here and I do have wires on the floor which I'd usually take down to a wooden pub floor rather than a carpet in here so I'm not going to do that so no judgment for my cabling. Usually everything would be a lot neater and I should probably just talk you through a few things that I like personally. I like having the speakers at sort of head height, maybe just a little bit above someone who is five foot seven or so, just so it projects to the back of the room. My mic stand, I prefer to have slightly at an angle. I don't want it just straight up because I have done a lot of four hour gigs and in four hours, people go from having a nice time to being rather drunk and they might start dancing. And if you have a boom mic stand sort of like facing out. I don't know how to explain this, but basically there is logic behind it because you don't want people knocking into you and drunk people have no spatial awareness. No matter how much they're enjoying themselves and having a lovely time and they love what you're doing, there are some awkward moments. So that is why I have it in an angle. And actually nowadays I even use that for original music gigs when I'm up on a stage because it does mean that the whole guitar can be seen in this sort of area. Anyway, 
fun little fact. As mentioned earlier, this is my little monitor that I use so that I can hear myself when I'm in a noisy environment. Um, I always do have a little bit of reverb. I have the volume sometimes quite high uh, in this environment, it's, it's super low, but very, very handy to have. I have these settings pretty much as they are here. Obviously the master volume will change if I'm in a really noisy pub environment. The guitar is, always sits a bit louder than the vocals, just because of the nature of what they do and how they work. Always remember to have the mic and line settings correctly, otherwise you will have a nasty uh, surprise when either something doesn't work or something is crazy, crazy loud. So be careful. Uh, that is where I have my monitor plugged in. It all looks like a bit of a mess, but it's just because it's such a small mixer. And this even goes into the back. If you can see up here, oh, it's too dark, but it fits into here, which is very, very, very handy for traveling. The definition of a musician doesn't have to involve $5,000 worth of gear. Let's make that shopping list that I promised at the beginning of the video. You have the PA system, Stage Pass 300, was about £250 second hand. There are newer versions now that are a little bit more money, but you might be able to go on Gumtree, Craigslist, whatever you use, eBay, and find something second hand that still works and will last you quite a long time. That includes the kettle lead, the speaker cables, stands, and a mixer. The mic stand and microphone together will probably come to about 75 quid. The microphone I was using was pretty affordable at about 50 pounds. And then the mic stand can be about 25 pounds if you really want a good one that will last. Then XLR cables and guitar leads can range obviously in quality and in price and in brand, but let's say that's about 60 pounds. Then the guitar, the strap and the capo. Well, that guitar was pretty decent quality when I bought it. So let's round that up to 650 pounds with all of that in, but it's probably worth a lot less now, but it also has a tuner built in. When I bought the loop pedal, it was quite expensive. They are slightly more affordable now and there are loads of different types but including the power supply, let's round that up to about 200 pounds. Then for the monitor, I was using the Roland Cube, which I've only ever bought first hand. So it's about 250 pounds, but they can be really self-sufficient. So you can just plug a mic and a guitar straight into that. And sometimes in a smaller venue, that's all you need. Then the guitar stand and lighting, obviously these are bonuses. 
but that's about £65 in total too. What I was using in the video, which I would describe as a really simple setup, still comes to £1,500, just over in fact, and that's about €1,700 Euros or $2,000 and it's a huge amount of money just to be trying to earn a living. Like in other, other jobs, you do not have to make such an investment to be able to get a return, but at the same time, the flexibility, the enjoyment of playing music for people, it is worth it. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed me showing the gear that I was using for so long. It's so beaten and battered and well-loved. And I learned so much from doing these four-hour cover gigs. I learned how to perform, how to interact with an audience, one thing I do want to mention is that I'm going on my debut headline UK tour, which consists of five dates in Glasgow, Manchester, Nottingham, London and Bristol. And I would love for all of you to join me if you can, if you are in those cities. And I will see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.